Everyone is different and will experience different side effects and to different degrees. You need to have appropriate counselling before the treatment about the potential side effects. We encourage that any support people attend any appointments with you. It makes it easier for you and your partner or carer if everyone understands the disease and treatment plan. Let's take a look now at how you can help manage some of the side effects we've mentioned earlier. You may get flu-like symptoms in the first few weeks of your treatment. You will be assessed in the clinic and may be advised to use paracetamol, for example Panadol. You should consult your doctor about the dose that is recommended for you to take to reduce these side effects and drink plenty of water. These symptoms usually subside after a few weeks. For fatigue or tiredness, you can save energy by asking friends or family to help whenever you are tired. Also, think about ways to conserve energy in daily activities such as showering in the part of the day when you are least tired or having your groceries delivered instead of carrying them. Rest when you are tired and don't push yourself. It is thought that interferon may increase your metabolism which can lead to weight loss and loss of appetite. Speak to a dietitian for further advice and monitoring. If you feel sick or nauseous, avoid greasy or heavy meals. Eat small meals more frequently. If you get diarrhea, drink plenty of fluids, avoid caffeinated drinks and avoid high fibre foods that may make it worse. If you are a diabetic, you may have trouble managing blood glucose levels due to changes in your diet or metabolism. These should be closely monitored and you may need to be referred to a specialist or diabetic clinic if necessary. You may get some redness or soreness at the injection sites. Tell the clinic about these as you may need further education on injection technique. Vary the injection site so you can avoid infection. Skin conditions may range from dry skin to serious skin conditions. All skin conditions will be reviewed on an ongoing basis and you may require referral to a dermatologist. It is best to use soap-free product in the shower and after showering like Sorbolene. In more complicated conditions, you may be treated with topical or oral steroids. In extreme cases, we may cease treatment. Hair loss occurs in approximately 10% of people due to interferon. It does not usually cause baldness, but more likely hair thinning, which usually resolves after treatment is complete. You may experience changes to how you feel and behave caused by the interferon. This side effect can vary. Some people suffer with anxiety, irritability, aggression and depression. So what's been happening for you since I saw you last month? Not too bad. I've got lots of support at home with my husband. He's been great. He's really understanding. So that's been helpful? Yeah, I'm very lucky to have his support during the treatment. He's really understanding. You will be closely monitored throughout treatment. It is important to communicate about how you feel and if you are un unable to manage your feelings, you will be advised to seek urgent treatment. Antidepressants may be used and counselling will also be considered. Throughout treatment you will have regular blood tests so that we can monitor the effects of your medication. So what are you testing for in the blood? Well, it's a combination of things we'll be looking at. They tell us how the medication is affecting you. Mm -hmm. We will test your neutrophils, the blood cells which fight infection, blood platelets which affect the clotting of your blood, haemoglobin or red blood cells and thyroid function. Sleep problems are a side effect of interferon and we will help with this. You will be monitored so you don't lose too much sleep and alternatives are discussed with the treating doctor. Reduced sexual drive may occur and needs to be discussed with your partner so they can be supportive. This is a normal side effect of interferon. It is helpful to discuss this with your nurse, doctor or counsellor if it becomes problematic. It is important before beginning treatment to be counselled about the implications and consequences of pregnancy. Monthly beta-HCG or pregnancy tests will be conducted on all females within childbearing age that are on treatment and pre-treatment. This will be discussed at each visit. Because ribavirin can cause serious birth defects, it should not be used by pregnant women. It should also not be used by males whose partner is pregnant 
or who may get a woman pregnant as this may lead to birth defects. Pregnancy is to be avoided during therapy and for six months after the completion of treatment. As no one form of contraception is 100% effective, both men and women being treated must always use a minimum of two medically effective forms of contraception. Hepatitis C affects the liver and while alcohol will not directly interact with interferon or ribavirin, it will increase liver damage. Drinking alcohol while on treatment will be like driving with the accelerator and the brake on at the same time. You go at a slower pace. To help speed you to recovery and protect you from more liver damage, your doctor will advise on the amount of alcohol allowed while on treatment. Ultimately, it is best not to drink alcohol at all. Some research has linked tobacco smoking to increased liver damage. While it is difficult to make recommendations based on one study, it is best to quit or cut back as much as you can. If there are drug and alcohol or mental health concerns, one of the team can arrange for you to see someone to help you deal with those issues before you begin and during treatment. Mm -hmm.